What's going on my sweet little squidlets? We are back here with Royal Enfield in Los Angeles checking out the brand new Shotgun 650. Now the keen observers among you might see that this is actually a Super Meteor 650 that's been slightly modified. We got a more aggressive geometry, slightly smaller wheels, and overall more of a custom feel to this thing. So in today's video, we're going to find out where the Shotgun 650 sits in the world of motorcycling and if it's fun to ride. Let's go take it for a spin. Let's take a quick look at the Shotgun 650 before we take off. So it's got a slightly smaller front wheel than the Super Meteor 650, but the keen among you will see that this is by and large a Super Meteor 650. See the frame is basically the same, same 648cc parallel twin with the 270 crank. Nice air and oil cooled machine, makes a healthy amount of power. I believe it's right around 48 horsepower or so. Don't quote me on that. So smaller wheel up at the front. We have a 1918 aspect tire up here. The same seat tires that all of the Royal Enfields come with. The Bybree brake setup. This is a subsidiary of Brembo, as many of you know. Same master cylinder as the Super Meteor 650. Same running gear, pretty much. The front suspension, you will notice, is a little different. We have a Showa unit up here that is a little bit shorter. We've basically taken the motorcycle, pointed it on his nose a little bit, increased the length at the rear, right? So we're creating a bike that has a little bit sportier geometry. Not much, you can tell. It's still a, a bit of a roadster. I almost said sportster. That's not the bike we want to say. But it does resemble the sportster a little bit because the foot pegs are mounted right here. Not right here where you would normally see on the Super Meteor 650. The seat height is a little bit taller too. This is a 31.2 inch seat height. And that back here you see we have a 17 inch wheel. Sprocket sizes are the same. You can tell it's got this floating kind of bobber-esque seat right here. Still has a nice healthy tail section. There's actually a removable rack slash subframe you can put on this bike and put it over here. Whole name of the game with the shotgun is customization. But when you swing a leg over it, it actually looks pretty normal, honestly. Uh, I'm about 5'11", a 32 inch inseam, and when I sit aboard this machine, I've got a nice pronounced bend in my legs. If I put a foot up right here, I don't want to say it, but the ergonomics package does remind me quite a bit of Harley-Davidson's Iron 883. And that truly is because this motorcycle defies a lot of categorization in a lot of ways. It's not quite a roadster. It's not quite a cruiser. It's something in the middle meant for people to customize highly. So we're about to take off here on this beautiful canyon road in LA, and I'm going to tell you how it rides. Quick sound check on the Shotgun 650. It's got that nice throaty parallel twin bark, but you know, it's it's pretty friendly. I would say this bike is definitely beginner appropriate. It's not gonna scare anybody. All right, so the running gear is pretty much the same as the Super Meteor 650. So you get that nice honk from the parallel twin, the 270 crank. The throttle response is a cable actuated throttle. God bless. Very nice. I wasn't a huge fan of Royal Enfield's ride by wire on the Himalayan. Don't tell him I told you that though. <laughs> I think their cable throttle is much more successful. And side to side here, I wouldn't say this bike is exactly happy doing this, but it is capable of doing it, which is nice. You guys will probably hear throughout this review, I will be scraping hard parts. Let's see if I can get one down over here. Ah, pace needs to be picked up just a teensy bit for that. But you guys will hear throughout the review because this bike actually doesn't have a lot of clearance, to be honest. And that's going to hamper the ability for it to do this sort of thing. But, you know, you chuck a guy like me, a club racer, a, a little fast boy, I always try to push the envelopes of these machines. And it's not really quite what the bike is designed for, nor is it going to be what the motorcycle is really going to excel at either. Royal Enfield is billing this as a highly customizable motorcycle. They want to get into the custom scene with it. And, you know, in that regard, it, I think it's very successful because there's a big gap in the market right now for a kind of factory custom bike at an entry price point. You know, Triumph offers stuff like the, the Bobber and those sort of motorcycles. Um, but, you know, at this price point, this bike's definitely going to be sub $9,000, maybe even sub $8,000. We don't know the pricing yet, so I can't report that. Um, but it's a, it's a bike that is going to come in at a pretty cheap price point. So 
for that kind of customization aspect of it. Uh, you know, pretty cool to come in. Like, it's an entry point to the type of person that wants to tinker with their motorcycles. And I remember talking about this when we had the INT 650 back in 2022 as a giveaway motorcycle. Um, so we have to spend a lot of time with that bike. You know, the fact that there's an entire parts catalog for the machine is pretty sweet. And I could really see this becoming a great platform for that too. And they've built it in such a way that it's got a pretty neutral riding position, but it has kind of like this cruiser flavor. So it does defy categorization. But I do think it's pretty much like a Royal Enfield Sportster, really. Because the seating position is almost identical. You're in this kind of clamshell shape. The bars are a little bit wider. You have good leverage over them. I don't know. I think this thing versus a, a bone stock 883, I think it might be able to dust up on it, to be honest. Oh, there it was. A little scrape. These roads are so fun. <laughs> Breaking in, trailing it in. So those geometry train changes over the uh, Super Meteor 650, you definitely can tell. However, I don't think it's 100% successful. Some of these roads are a little bit bumpier and because the spring rates are a little different, it tends to pogo a little bit. And I don't feel like there's a nice one-to-one -one with the front end and the rear end. It feels like the bike kind of tosses around left to right in a way that isn't really desirable. But maybe that's because I'm pushing it to, you know, six or maybe seven tenths or going a little more wide open between these corners or having some fun with this motorcycle. And that might lend itself to, you know, maybe it's just beyond the pace that was intended for this bike. But like any motorcycle with a somewhat reasonably competent rider, you can definitely make it dance but you have to have your expectations in check. I'm riding it in kind of a sport bike way. I'm kind of gripping the outside tank with my outside leg. So you can see there, I don't know if you can see it. I'm kind of doing the whole sport bike thing with it. And it's working pretty decently. It's the type of stuff you couldn't really do that with the Super Meteor 650. The Super Meteor was a bike you had to ride a little more cautiously with, uh, you know, those foot forward controls. You'd have to really get the bike you know, pointed where you'd want and, you know, just chill out a little more. It is a cruiser. This is something a little bit different. It's quite fun. And hey, anything on two wheels, man, I'll go and rip it. I'd take a scooter down these roads. Are you kidding me? These are fantastic. Trail it in here. Decrease the radius. Very nice. Very, very nice. Now, I will say someone with a little more stunting abilities than myself could get the front wheel up on this Royal Enfield. I tried off camera and I will spare you from my piss poor results because I could not get this motorcycle to pop the front wheel up. And look, I'm not saying that every bike that I ride needs to have the ability to pop a nice little wheelie. And this thing with its weight and overall geometry is not best suited for that. But I really like it when I can float the front end a little bit on my motorcycles. I really do. Maybe we gotta get those Harley stunt boys to come through and uh, enjoy the motorcycle in that way. <laughs> but it's a very neutral handling motorcycle, very predictable. Like I said, it does pogo a little bit. I find the rebound to be a little aggressive. And I think they did that because they wanted to separate it from the Super Meteor 650. They wanted to make it so that it felt a little more sporty, it rebound a little faster. And it is stiffer for sure too. It's got more suspension travel at the rear and a taller shock overall. So that tells you everything you need to know at the, at the rear end. Preload is adjustable, so you might be able to dial out some of those things with, uh, with the preload lever. Let me give this guy a thumbs up. Hell yeah. This road would be so fun as a cyclist. Wide open. Grab and forth. Filling the brakes. Have a down one there. I mean, I'm having a good time. <laughs> Our lead rider here is setting a very nice pace, very enjoyable pace. These roads are so good. It's good to know that, you know, even if you customize this bike and you're not super like sport oriented, such as me, uh, 
you know, this is a very capable motorcycle. This isn't a bike that's gonna let you down with its capabilities, so to speak. You know, here's the thing. I am not this bike's target demographic. I'm, I'm not that into customizing my motorcycles. To be honest, most of my bikes are pretty bone stock that aren't race bikes, right? Like my Desert Sled is, uh, is a pretty bone stock motorcycle. I've got an exhaust on it and some different tires. That's about it. Uh, but this bike is designed for people to customize, so I'm definitely not the target audience. It's this kind of uh, roadster cruiser mix kind of bike. You know, in theory, this thing actually is the most Royal Enfield of Royal Enfields because you're meant to take it and do what you want with it, and it doesn't do any one thing particularly well. And I think that's an interesting place for Royal Enfield to try to play in the market. But truth be told, I don't think they went bold enough with the styling. You know, when I first laid eyes on this bike, I immediately just thought it was a slightly modified Super Meteor. And it kind of is. There's enough changes to where riding them back to back, you would definitely notice a big difference. However, I think they should have gone extremely bold with the styling. One of the concept bikes on this motorcycle back in Eichma was the Shotgun 650 concept. I think they called it the SG650. And it was like this silver, really cool looking thing. Kind of a muscle bike sort of vibe. And I think that they should have stuck with that, to be honest. It would have been really cool if we had this kind of like muscle bike look to it. Something a little more different um, that really differentiates it from the Super Meteor. I think that they could have gotten some different colors, maybe done something a little more splashy and interesting, because uh, I think it just kind of reads, I don't want to say boring, but maybe conservative would be a better word, right? But again, it's a blank canvas. You're meant to take it and, and modify it and change it to what you're supposed to do with it. So Shotgun 650 owners will ultimately take these bikes and they're supposed to change them up and do things with them, right? So we'll see if that's where it ends up in the marketplace, but I gotta say, it is a good motorcycle. Royal Enfield hasn't been making junk lately. This thing is competent in all the right ways. It's a really nice bike to ride. The throttle is really nice. The brakes are nice. Everything works exactly like you'd want it to. Sure, the geometry and the ergonomics are a bit peculiar for someone who's used to a naked bike or you know, a full-on cruiser or even a roadster like a Triumph Bonneville or a Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. But, you know, this bike is, is, is pretty cool. And it's gonna fit the marketplace where the Sportster used to play, right? And that's really awesome that they're gonna do that because there's a huge gap in the market, this big vacuum in the market right now. So guys, that's gonna wrap up my thoughts on the Royal Enfield Shotgun 650. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. I'm gonna keep riding and rolling on this motorcycle on this beautiful highway here in Los Angeles, California. Thanks so much for checking out today's video. I really do appreciate it. Catch you guys in the next one. See you later. Watch it, Gabby, no!